And hello there once again. Mick Cornette with Kent Myers, and you're watching The Verdict. Thank you for joining us. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues, and we're in an election season. We got the candidates here today. We really do, and just thrilled to have both candidates for lieutenant governor. Today, we have titled this show, Meet Your New Lieutenant Governor, because that's what you'll do today. We have uh, Senator uh, Corn and Senator Lamb uh, joining us, the Democrat and Republican nominees for the position of Lieutenant Governor. They've been gracious enough to come here together and talk together, and uh, if you'll get a chance to see them both, we're just uh, really appreciative of them uh, being so gracious with their time. And we'll get started on that show right after this commercial break. idea of sending American money out of our own economy these days for foreign oil is madness. Yet we're spending $25 billion a month on foreign oil. America's 100-year supply of natural gas can break this pattern and strengthen our economy. See how it can create jobs, generate clean electricity, fuel our cars, and protect our environment at chk.com. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Hospital. Go to saintsok.com and reserve your time online. Why didn't we think of that? And welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today, we're really pleased to have the two candidates for lieutenant governor for the state of Oklahoma, and that's why we call this show Meet Your New Lieutenant Governor, because that's what you're going to do today. One of these two gentlemen will be elected at the November election, and we want you to hear all about the issues from both of them. On my right is the Honorable Kenneth Korn, a state senator from District 4. He's a Democratic candidate for lieutenant governor. He did his undergraduate work at the University of Oklahoma, where he was a member of the President's Leadership Conference and graduated with honors. Uh, he was elected first to the House of Representatives at a very young age, 22 or, or the like, uh, and then went on to be elected to the Oklahoma Senate in 2002. He's been the author or sponsor or a champion of many significant legislative issues in the Senate uh, for the state of Oklahoma. Uh, he is the current Democratic Caucus Chairman, and he's also involved, as you might imagine, in many civic and cultural activities in his hometown and in the state, and uh, was selected as a Democratic candidate. Uh, Senator Corn, thanks for coming. Thank you for having us today. Sure appreciate the opportunity. Well, it's our pleasure, believe me. To my left is Honorable Todd Lamb. Todd is the state senator for District uh, 47, the Republican candidate uh, for lieutenant governor. He did his undergraduate work at uh, Oklahoma State University, where he played college football as well. Uh, he uh, did his law work at Oklahoma City University. Uh, he was a Secret Service agent for approximately six years. He was elected to the Senate in 2004 and is the first person to be the Republican uh, majority floor leader in state history uh, in the state Senate. Uh, he likewise is involved, has been involved in many uh, significant legislative activities in the Senate and uh, in cultural and civic events in his community and around the state. 
Uh, Senator Lamb, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Thank you. Well documented. Both of you love our state. Senator Corn, you've been on record as saying that Oklahoma, though, needs to continue to be a place where people can stake their claim for a better life. What does that mean to you? Well, you know, if you look at just the history of our state, you see people came here with the hopes that they could provide a better way of life for their families. I think that's what needs to be happening in Oklahoma today. We need to be creating an economy in the state that allows our people to not only be successful but also allow their children and their grandchildren to stay in this state. And I think we need to be progressive in looking at the type of policies that allows us to be business friendly, that allows us to create jobs, uh, to grow entrepreneurs here in this state, to give them a chance to be successful, and also recruit companies to come into Oklahoma. And I think if we'll do that, people can get their share of the American dream right here in Oklahoma, and we can be a national leader. Uh, Senator Lamb, you speak on your website, and one of the things important to you is improving Oklahoma's image. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, as you know, Ken, Mayor, I've been on official economic development trips throughout my public service years ago in the 90s when I was in Governor Keating's administration on economic development missions. I visit with uh, leaders in other countries. Uh, half the United States I travel on economic development trade missions. As a former Secret Service agent, when I served in that capacity in the Clinton and Bush administration, I traveled extensively. And I got to understand the, the perception people outside of Oklahoma had of our state. And it's not the perception we have inside. We have a great state, the greatest state in the nation. I want to be a very aggressive and tenacious ambassador on behalf of our state to lay out the secret of Oklahoma. We've enacted some significant pro-growth policies for business retention and business recruitment in Oklahoma. I want to share that secret so jobs can continue to flourish in our state and we can recruit jobs to our state so our future kids and grandkids don't have to go to Texas or any other state for that matter to find a job. Senator Corn, you list education as one of your priorities. What would you do differently? Well, the first thing I would do is something that Senator Wilcox and I worked on in the Senate was to change the policy in Oklahoma that a 16-year-old can make the decision to drop out of school that it's the wrong direction for Oklahoma and we must have an educated workforce if we're going to be successful. So first of all, I'd get rid of that as a public policy. Secondly, I think we need to modernize our schools in Oklahoma. We're still teaching as though it's 100 years ago in this state and kids just don't learn that one anymore. They're engaged now uh, more so than ever and if you're going to really get them interested in what's going on in the classroom, you got to go the way they learn and that today is with computers and technology so we need to be looking at that and then the next thing I tell you that I think we need to do in education in Oklahoma is we need to be looking at how do we make sure we get more people to graduate either with a career tech certificate or at least a two-year college degree because a two-year college degree or career tech certificate is now what a high school diploma was 20 years ago and if we're going to compete for high skill, high wage jobs in Oklahoma, we've got to produce that workforce. And so one of the things I propose is doing the second century promise that would virtually give every child who's academically successful in Oklahoma, who stayed out of trouble and willing to do community service back to this state, we'd give them the first year college free. They're doing this in North Carolina. It's very successful there. Their business community loves it. And the kids are finding out there's a light at the end of the tunnel and their dropout rate is declining. Senator Lamb, education. Education. Well, first of all, I'm doing my small part. Monica, I married a former public school teacher. My wife taught in the Tulsa public school system, Oklahoma City public school system. And I do homework with my children every night. Our, our son is in fourth grade. Our daughter's in first grade. Education, personally, is extremely important. I went to McKinley Grade School, junior, uh, Waller Junior High, and Enid High School, where I was born and raised in Enid. We have to understand, we have to focus on student achievement in Oklahoma. It's just, on, it's just not a matter of more money to say more money. Uh, Senator Corn mentioned career tech. We have, if not the greatest, one of the greatest career techs in the entire nation. We have to continue to build on that and not tread water with career tech and say, we're good enough, we're a model right now, we'll always be a model with career tech. We've got to make sure career tech and our businesses continue to communicate to offer the programs to make sure our workers are skilled, but at the, in the public school system, focus on student achievement. Get our test scores up, demand some reform, some real rigor in our school system because our students they're not just competing with kids from Missouri or New Mexico or Kansas any longer it's international competition we have a very very small world with technology now we have to make sure our kids are prepared and focus on student achievement uh, Senator Lamb uh, you talk about growing the economy uh, how would you go about doing that well it's one thing I do in the private sector I'm not a career politician I serve in the state senate been there six years but as my friends at church like to say I have a real job outside of state government. That's important. You know, you've got this perspective outside of just theory and public policy. 
but I'm general counsel. I, I work on uh, employment issues, I negotiate contracts, and I deal with employers in Oklahoma and outside of Oklahoma as we negotiate business deals. As Lieutenant Governor, I want to take my private sector experience, apply that to the Office of Lieutenant Governor, and be very tenacious and aggressive. One, to, to keep our businesses here, focus on business retention. We've got to understand other states want our companies too. We have to have an ongoing conversation asking businessmen and women, what impedes your opportunity for growth in Oklahoma? Can we remove that impediment? What in other states allow you to thrive and prosper if an Oklahoma business is engaged in another state? Can we adopt that policy here, enact that policy here? And business recruitment. I've done it in the private sector. I did it years ago when I worked in the governor's administration. We have to understand that, or think about this, right now we're taping this around the OU Texas weekend. This may show afterwards, but we always expect in Oklahoma to beat Texas, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, whether you're a cowboy, a Sooner, or a Golden Hurricane. We demand the best from our football teams. It's time we compete and surpass Texas in something other than football. Senator Corn, your comments about the economy. Sure. The first thing that should be our number one priority in the state capital is growing this economy in the state so people can actually share in the fruits of their labor in Oklahoma and be successful with their communities and, uh, and their families. Uh, as state senator, I've actually recruited jobs to Oklahoma. I've sat across the table from CEOs and done the things that were necessary to get them to locate within the state. And a number of times I've heard each one of them say, uh, Senator Corn, there's a number of things we think you need to do in Oklahoma. Number one, you need to educate your workforce. You've got plenty of people who have a great work ethic who want to go to work, but you've not given them the skills that are necessary for the types of jobs that we have. So first and foremost, we've got to do some work in Oklahoma in developing a workforce with the skills that are necessary in a global economy. Secondly, the quality of life matters to uh, corporations as they look to Oklahoma or small businesses when they look to expand. Uh, we've got to take and make some investments in Oklahoma. Our roads and bridges are falling apart. Our water and sewer systems don't meet many of the standards that are necessary. We need rail and airports. And if we will make the statewide uh, plan and put in place, we can tell companies, not if you come to Oklahoma, we'll build it. We should build it and they will come. And we've got to be really focused on this. You know, when I talked with the, the CEO of ConocoPhillips when they were leaving Oklahoma, I said, tell me what it would take for you to stay in Oklahoma. Why are companies leaving the state? And he mentioned quality of life. He mentioned education. He mentioned infrastructure. Uh, he wants us to be a state that's successful because he's originally from Oklahoma. And all those things we've ignored from the legislature for far too long. Senator Kenneth Corn, Senator Todd Lamb, your candidates for lieutenant governor. We'll be back with another segment right after this. I'm Beulah Shavney, and I'm an original member of the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, and I'm Chickasaw. I worked at the Phoenix Indian Hospital for a year, and then there was the war. I felt like it was my duty I wanted in the Army, so I made it, got in, and it was a good feeling to put that uniform on. We were one of a kind that <laughs> started something, and uh, finished it. To see these women go in today, they are really doing a great job. And I'm very proud to look back now and see that I was one of the first ones of the Army that went in. There is just something that stands out about Chickasaw women. They want to go as far as they can go and succeed. And I've got to do my best because I'm Chickasaw. We didn't just wake up with this problem. Barrel by barrel, dollar by dollar, we've been exchanging American security for foreign oil. Enough. We're home to a 100-year supply of natural gas, and now we know its potential. Fuel, power, cleaner air. See how natural gas is making a difference at chk.com. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas.
Welcome back to the set of the verdict. We're discussing lieutenant governor issues with the two candidates for that office, Senator Corn and Senator Lamb. Senator Corn, you speak of health care as being an important issue. Expand on that. It's an important issue to us because in many parts of Oklahoma, our rural hospitals are struggling to stay open. It is an issue to us because we have ambulance services that are out there. They're almost non-existent in many parts of our state. So the access to care is really restricting uh, upon our citizens. And so if we're going to be successful as a state to recruit companies and to grow business, we've got to have a health care system that allows them to take care of their families and their employees. And we don't have that right now in Oklahoma. In addition, I will tell you that I believe that we should work very hard in Oklahoma to make sure we have more doctors and nurses in these critical areas throughout Oklahoma. Uh, there is a shortage. Uh, we haven't addressed it at the legislature. We must do that if we're going to be successful. And we've got to do preventative care in Oklahoma. You know, the cost of doing business in Oklahoma today, some of the high cost of it is because of the health care. And we've got to be looking at a way how we reduce that so that we can allow companies to be successful in Oklahoma. And one of the things I would propose that we do, we need to have a statewide summit on health care in Oklahoma. How do we have a delivery system in this state that's effective? And what do we need to do to put preventative care in place so we teach our children what the right choices are uh, so that they will be successful uh, in employment and in their lives and, and then raising their own families? And then the other thing I tell you is I believe we should do a patient's bill of rights in Oklahoma. I'm a firm uh, believer that your doctor should make medical decisions, not an accountant at an insurance company. And I think we can pass that through the legislature where it only covers medically necessary items. Because uh, I don't think someone that doesn't know your history, who doesn't know what's going on with you, should be making those decisions. I think a, a doctor should make that decision. Senator Lamb, health care. Two important aspects of health care in Oklahoma, accessibility and affordability. Uh, being a part of the leadership team in the Oklahoma State Senate the last two years, serving as majority floor leader, as you mentioned in the introduction, I've had a commitment personally and part of the leadership team to OSU Tulsa. Those osteopaths that are trained there in Tulsa oftentimes, more often than not, go back to rural Oklahoma. I'm from rural Oklahoma, born and raised in Enid. My dad's a Canute boy, born in a house that's no longer there in Canute. I've got a real commitment to rural Oklahoma. I've always been a part of the rural caucus and the ag and rural development. Uh, committee in the state senate we have to understand if rural Oklahoma dies on the vine Oklahoma dies on the vine so affordability and accessibility what we've done with OSU Tulsa to make sure that stays on sure financial footing so we can train these osteopaths to go back into rural Oklahoma and all throughout our state two years ago uh, the Oklahoma state senate leadership of Oklahoma legislature and the trial bar uh, the trial attorneys came to a compromise on some tort reform which I think in the near future you'll see lowering in medical costs and again that was a compromise between the trial lawyers the, the the plaintiffs bar and the Oklahoma legislature a good first step for for kind of the Hatfields and McCoys to come together and say we'll agree on this issue to move Oklahoma forward uh, Senator Lamb uh, you mentioned uh, on your website and on your issues uh, page that uh, the workers comp system needs some work uh, first of all what's wrong with it and second what would you do about it it's interesting Ken about four weeks ago when we've had town hall meetings just like Senator Corn has I'm sure all around the state I visited at kitchen tables with just moms and dads and conference room tables with small, medium, and large sized businesses. Four weeks ago, we were in Hobart, about 17 people in a town hall meeting. We spent 40 minutes in Hobart, Oklahoma, talking about workers' comp. 40 minutes in Hobart, Oklahoma. Well, I've heard that more often than not. I was the first statewide candidate to hit all 77 counties that we know of, the first one to talk about it and put a press release on it. I've traveled extensively around this state, and more often than not, the conversation uh, focuses on workers' comp reform. This past session, we took some steps towards significant workers' comp reform, requiring Senate confirmation of judges, entering a checks and balance. We want to focus with a task force on the rehabilitative services we have in workers' comp to make sure the, the worker is taken care of and can go back to work as soon as he or she wants. Because most employers that are injured and workers that are injured, they want to get back to work to provide for their family. That's what we've done in the past, and I think we'll see some positive ramifications in the near future on that. Two more things we need to do to answer your question directly. We need to increase our fraud investigators in Oklahoma so the small businesses can continue to create jobs in Oklahoma. And something Texas does, which I think we need to look at and have the debate on. And I'm not advocating a wholesale adoption of the Texas workers' compensation, uh, compensation system, excuse me. But one thing they do that I think we need to examine is allowing an opt-out provision for our businesses. Who are we as a state to mandate to a business what you must and what you must not do? That ought to be a decision at the conference table of that small business. Senator Corn, your comments? 
Well, workers' comp is an issue for us in Oklahoma. As you hear it from small business leaders, just like Senator Lamb, I've been around the state and I've been talking to them on Main Street about what it would take for us to fill those storefronts again, uh, what it would take for us to expand jobs in Oklahoma, the factories that we have, and how do we recruit other people to Oklahoma. And there's no question, one of the things we have to address is fraud. Uh, we have people who game the system, who find a way to file a workers' comp claim after workers' comp claim, and we've got to put an end to that. We need to really put more money over the Attorney General's fraud unit, let them actually prosecute people who uh, game the system, and I think we'll do that. We'll see a significant change in what's taking place. The other thing I'll mention to you on workers' comp that I think is extremely important for us is we need to look at the health care side of it. We always talk about one side of, of workers' comp, but we never talk about what's happening on the side that actually drives the cost. You know, we need to make sure we're not having procedures done that are uh, not warranted. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, we have a fee schedule that's appropriate and that uh, our small businesses are not picking up all that tab. Because, you know, if you just look at what health care is doing to families across the state, uh, you know it's got to be doing the same thing for small business. And those procedures that are unnecessary cost small business a great deal. Okay, we've got just a couple of minutes left, maybe two to three minutes left, and I want to give each of you a chance to kind of make a final comment. And we had a coin flip before the show. <laughs> Senator Lamb, you're going to be going first. About a minute and a half on why the voters should select you. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mayor, Councilor. Thank you for allowing us to come on today. Uh, I asked for the vote on November 2nd for the lieutenant governor's race, and you can look at our website, votetodlam.com. But I, I offer my background and experience. I'm a former Secret Service, uh, former Secret Service agent. I tell people I protected President Clinton with my life, President Bush with my life. You can't get any more bipartisan than that. <laughs> I've got a very bipartisan approach uh, to policy and politics and compromising. But I have a real job now outside of state government. I'm not a career politician. I'm a family man. I'm raising a family in this economy. I understand what it is to sacrifice for your children, to have that conversation with your wife at the kitchen table, to cut the budget, the family budget in these economic times. And I want to bring my private sector experience to the public sector and recruit jobs and visit with businesses. Say, what can we do to allow you to create more jobs, to employ more kids? Stop this brain drain to Texas. We expect to beat Texas in football. It's time we compete with Texas. Texas is an economic power internationally. If we compete with Texas economically, we uh, immediately compete internationally. Business retention, business recruitment. I ask for your people's vote on November 2nd. Senator Corn. Well, thanks for the opportunity to be here. And I think it's important that the citizens of our state get a chance to hear us. Uh, I will tell you that uh, I grew up in rural Oklahoma in Poto uh, and uh, lived in a family where I know what it means for people to struggle. I mean, when I was in high school, I had to uh, work every day uh, to make sure I had enough money for school clothes. Uh, supplies for school. My mom and dad worked hard all their lives. My dad was a high school dropout. He joined the United States Navy, went to Vietnam, came home and raised a family. He unloaded trucks at night at Walmart. And uh, he went to work so often when I saw him so sick that he couldn't hold his head up because he knew if he didn't go to work that there would not be enough money at the end of the month to take care of his family. That goes on thousands of times across the state. And the reason why I think people should elect me Lieutenant Governor is because I'm going to be someone that goes to work every day on behalf of them to make sure that we're doing what's necessary that their families can be successful, to create jobs, to expand business in Oklahoma, to give their kids a quality education, and make the right investments in our communities that lets this state grow. And when my father died, he had a dollar bill in his pocket. That's all he had. And I want to tell you, I believe wholeheartedly that we must work to a goal in this state that people who work hard and play by the rules every day shouldn't live in poverty. And that's what I'll do as Lieutenant Governor of the state. Senator Kenneth Corn, Senator Todd Lamb, thank you both for coming on The Verdict. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you both. Appreciate it. We really appreciate it. Election coming up uh, just around the corner. And uh, uh, one of you is going to be elected Lieutenant Governor. I must say the state of Oklahoma is going to be represented well regardless of that choice. So Back thank you all you. both for coming on. Kent and I will have a final word right after this. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. 
The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Lieutenant Governor is an interesting position in Oklahoma because it really doesn't have a job responsibility other than being there if the governor, for whatever reason, cannot hold the office. Well, it does have a little additional responsibility on tourism. Mm -hmm. It is uh, the Lieutenant Governor is chairman of the Tourism uh, Commission and uh, is in charge of that. But basically, it is a uh, is waiting in the wings mm -hmm. to hope nothing happens. That's right. Trying to project a good image for Oklahoma and looking after the state senate, I guess, is, well, is another I, and, role. <clears throat> let me endorse what you said. To, with while the two candidates were here is that we are going to have a good lieutenant governor. It's so nice to be able to present two candidates of the final two uh, for a statewide important office and they're both good. We have some website information where you can get more information about these two candidates and their campaigns. Kenneth Corn's campaign website is c4ok.com that's c4ok.com and Todd Lamb's web address is votetoddlamb.com votetoddlamb.com and we have one other web address we'd like to draw your attention to. That's our web address. We'd love you to go there if you have an idea for a show or a person you'd like to see interviewed on The Verdict. That web address is theverdict.tv. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks for joining us. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week right here on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.